Hello and welcome to another AGD tutorial and as promised in this video we're going to look at how we give our little sprite an axe like this one here. Several things to consider here. First of all what the axe looks like. Secondly how it's spawned. Thirdly how we actually uh, make the axe move, how it bounces. We also have the fact that the axe can be caught by the player and as you can see here we also want the axe to run out at a certain point of time so that it just doesn't keep moving endlessly. So we have to think about all of those things and the first one that we're going to think about is how the sprite itself actually looks. So let's go into the sprite editor. Um, the first four sprites are the player so logically sprite number four here is this battle axe. Now this isn't the same as in the original. I've chosen to get a little bit creative you can do the same of course, create a fireball perhaps or a spinning dagger, uh, a ball of magic, anything you want really, it will, uh, it's entirely up to you. I wouldn't use more than four frames though simply because each frame takes up about 128 bytes so that's over 500 bytes just to make that sprite and uh, AGD is pretty demanding when it comes to, uh, to memory so I wouldn't use more than that. Okay so now we know what our sprite looks like, let's place it into the play area. I've created a sprite type 1, set it to the image and for now I'm just going to put it on the screen there and uh, test some simple movement code. As always it's good to go step by step here, um, that's a good way to avoid bugs and so on. Breaking the code down into separate pieces is always the best approach. So let's take a look here at sprite type 1. If you know about uh, bouncing enemy code, you'll see that this is very similar. I'm using uh, param A as 0 and 1 to indicate either left or right movement. I actually have a test here to make sure that the axe doesn't go too far to the left, but in actual fact this wasn't necessary in the end. Um, I've still left it in there, probably could remove it. The main thing is that it checks if it can go left and moves the sprite left, and if it can't, it will set param A to be 1. So if you can't, if you can't move left, move right. The other thing of course to notice here is that I'm using a repeat command and that goes over the over the whole test so that it tests it twice. That means that it can't accidentally uh, move itself into uh, an area that it shouldn't. And so it repeats itself twice and then it moves itself twice. In other words, the axe is going to move at twice the speed of the player. It's actually going to be moving 4 pixels each time but we do the check twice as well, not just the movement, um, to make sure that the sprite bounces when it, hits the, uh, when it hits the wall and so on. Okay, and if we look now at direction, which is controlling the vertical movement, we can see if the sprite can go up, let direction 1, and the reverse is 0. Another thing to notice here is that I'm using 1 and 0, and it actually corresponds to the image. 0 and 1 were left and right, uh, followed by up and then down and that's actually going to be quite an important um, factor when it comes to controlling the diagonals and we'll see that later. Finally as you can see there we also have if c equals zero and that's an animation. So let's take a look now at the sprite itself without actually adding any conditions and we can see here the sprite is just bouncing up and down and not actually doing anything. So we've got movement we haven't initiated any kind of control over it yet though other than the fact that it bounces so at least it's good to know that that's working. Let's go back now into the event editor and in this case we're going to go to initialize sprite and set param A and direction so that we can test that the axe is moving in the way that it should. So if we use here if type equals 1 let param A equal 1 and we'll also let direction equal 1 and that should give us diagonal movement at the outset when the sprite is initialized. So we'll uh, run a test now and make sure that that's working. Let's see how we go and as you can see there are no problems there. It's moving exactly as we coded it to do. There are no issues at all other than the fact of course that uh, it's just moving forever and uh, the player can't catch it so we need to consider those things. Before we do that though we also have to think about how we can spawn the sprite itself. So 
let's move on to doing that next. You may imagine that I might decide to use the spawn command to create the sprite at the point of the player, but that's actually not what I'm going to do. Instead, you may remember the black on black attribute squares, which I mentioned in the previous video, and I've created a small square at the bottom there where I'm going to hide the axe. That means that when the page is initialized, it won't be visible to the player at all. But the axe will be there, ready to be uh, launched by the player as soon as uh, the fire button is pressed. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. The next thing that I'm going to do is go into the initialize sprite area, take out this uh, parameter and direction because we don't need that. We'll, uh, we'll have the player assign that to the axe uh, according to the direction that the player is moving. But what we will do here is set X to be 200, which basically means that it's now off screen and not visible. This is perfectly fine. It doesn't cause any problems and um, is a good way of keeping the sprite active without actually, um, without actually having it being involved in the game itself. So what I'm going to do now with the sprite code for the axe is put it inside a condition. If X equals 200, else do everything else. So in other words, the movement code will only apply to the sprite when it is in active play. So when it's set to be 200, it means the sprite is actually inactive. It's basically waiting to be, uh, to be activated by the player. The reason this is a good way of approaching it is because we don't need to spawn the sprite. It's always there and it means that we only ever have one axe. It won't, we don't need to check if the player has already spawned the axe, if it's moving and so on. We know there's just one axe. It's either, either running around or if you like the little blank area is basically the, um, the pocket, if you like. It's a little pocket that the, uh, that the player is using to hold the axe. And as you can see from that demo, the axe is invisible. We know it's there, but it's not visible to the player. The next thing that we want to do then, of course, is wait for the player to press a button, in which case we will activate the sprite. So this is done by pressing key four, which is the fire button. So we'll code in here if key four, let x equal a, let y equal b. You'll remember from the previous code that a and b are stored in the player event as the position of the player. So this is telling the sprite, and you'll notice this if key four is in the sprite one code, it's the weapon itself, not the player, that's being activated here. And um, let's try that out now. If we now press the uh, fire button, as you can see, there goes the axe bouncing around quite happily. But of course, now that the axe is activated, it's just going to keep moving. It doesn't go back to the player. It doesn't stop. And of course, if the player presses the button again, absolutely nothing will happen. There won't be a second axe because he's only got one axe and that's how we want it. So the next thing that we have to do is uh, consider how we can bring more control into that, uh, into that axe in terms of the uh, player direction. So let's take a look at that now. The first thing that we're going to do here is add some code that will uh, test which current image we have for the player. So we'll start by saying if collision zero, which means if it's colliding with the player, what will this do? Well, basically this will, at the start when the axe is initiated, we know that it's touching the player. So what we do is test for collision. Then we use a temporary variable, in this case Q, to identify which image is currently being used by the player. So when we write other, it means check the player image, store it in variable Q, now go back to the axe. The next thing we do is we set param A to two and direction to two. Now, as you know, we're testing for zero and one. In other words, this means the axe is not moving at all at this point. The next thing that we have to test is the image, which we know we've stored in Q. So if two greater than Q, in other words, if image is zero or one, set param A to zero or one. In other words, if the player is facing to the left or to the right, then set zero or one. If we are checking for 
uh, an image which is higher than that, in other words when the player is moving up and down, will set the direction to the image, which will also be zero, uh, 0 or 1, but of course we know that the image is going to be 2 or 3, so what we do is add 254 to the direction. Adding 254 is the same as subtracting 2. The reason I do that here is because the variable lengths are quite long. Add is a much shorter word than subtract and for that reason it means that we won't uh, go over the edge of the screen and it takes up less screen space. That's the only reason I've done that but effectively what we're doing here is looking at the image. There are four possible images, there are four possible directions so let's test if that actually works. Well we can see when the player is moving upwards there the sprite moves up, reset and moves to the right. Let's go back and uh, reset again. We have to reset every time because of course the axe just keeps moving but we can see here that this is actually working perfectly fine. The sprite is moving exactly according to the direction that the player is moving in. So that's all very well and good, very nice, very tidy, but we don't have any diagonals and that will be our next challenge. So let's take a look at, um, at how we can approach moving diagonals. As you can see I'm trying to do diagonals there, it's just not working. When I do a diagonal it just moves up or down. So um, let's, uh, let's look at how we can do that. Now the best way to do this really, the most simple way, is that Diagonals are activated only when the player is moving, so we're going to check if the player is uh, moving to the left or right, and um, and if and if they are, we will take in another factor. So here, as you can see, where we're setting the horizontal direction, we're testing for key zero, which is movement to the right, or key one, which is movement to the left, and we're telling the um, we're telling the uh, code that what we need to do is if the image is facing upwards but the player is also moving to the left or right, in other words diagonal, then don't just change the uh, direction, don't just set the direction but also set the, the horizontal direction, the param A. So let's take a look at the impact that that has and as you can see now there is the uh, vertical movement Let's now test it for a diagonal and there we go. So that's working perfectly now. We'll test it for each diagonal just to be thorough. We'll make sure that it's working. Yep, that one's all good. And um, yep, that's, uh, that's all fine as well. No problems there. And uh, the final one, let's, I think we've missed uh, one direction perhaps. So I think we're happy with it. Okay, good. Looks like we're happy. So let's move on. The next thing that we want to look at then, of course, is to allow the axe to run out of time because we don't want it to just keep bouncing and bouncing like that. So we're now going to use the third local variable which is param b. I'm here in the active sprite area, x equal 200 is the inactive area, this is the active area. So I'm going to start with param b here and say that if param b is more than zero, subtract 1 from, uh, from param b. In other words, it's a countdown. And um, what we'll do is uh, when, the, when the sprite is uh, activated, we will set the param b to a higher number. It will then count down. And, um, and when it runs out, when the timer runs out, we'll put the sprite back into its uh, little box in the corner. So here we're going to run a little test which will say um, let param b equal uh, let's say about uh, 150 we could try that for now so let's put that into here let param b equal 150 in other words once you've spawned the sprite set the counter to 150 and start counting down because as soon as it's done this once we've set the x to another setting the uh, the counter will start it'll start counting down and um, as you can see there now the only thing we need to do is test if param b is actually if it has actually reached zero so we'll put that into here 
uh, remember this is the active sprite so if power mb equals 0 let x equal 200 and leave in other words the counter has reached 0 put the sprite back in its little box in the corner and leave and it will then be sitting there waiting for the player to press fire and reactivate it let's take a look at that now in the actual game itself and see how that works okay and fire away okay there it is it's bouncing it's moving and after a certain period of time it's gone and it's gone back can we fire it again yes we can it keeps moving power and b is counting down and there you go that's a little bit long so let's try and uh, make an adjustment just to test that the uh, that it's definitely working let's change it to 50 just to see the impact it's always good to play with these things just to to help with the understanding of exactly what's happening so this controls how long the sprite is in motion now that's a pretty short period of time so I think what we'll do is we'll we'll strike a balance between the two and set it to a countdown of uh, of 100 that should give us just about enough time for a few bounces but not so long that it just keeps moving and the player starts chasing after it trying to get it to come back so always consider the uh, player experience when you're coding these things there we go so let's test it and it's now moving yeah that's a nice amount of time we'll do one more tap one more test good bouncing so we've got control now we've got movement we've got the timer the only thing really that's left to think about then is uh, is the uh, catching the sprite so let's see if we can code something uh, simple in here that will allow us to catch the sprite as it's moving um, again this is in the active code where the sprite is active we don't need anything when it's dormant let's try this to start with we'll see what happens when the sprite acts sprite collides with the player sprite so we'll just say if you hit the uh, player go back in your box simple as that right so let's see what happens when we do that um, here we go and we will spawn the sprite and oh dear we have a bit of a problem as you can see as soon as we're spawning the sprite it's going back in the box because of course it's next to the player so the last thing we need to do now is take that into account it's relatively straightforward because we have a timer um, that the that the, uh, that the axe is on so all we need to do now is uh, tell the code that in the first maybe 10 cycles don't collect the axe in other words when par and b is counting down starts at 100 we know so what we'll say is if 90 is bigger than par and b in other words that first 10 cycles don't do that test in other words don't pick up the axe when he's just thrown it wait uh, a few cycles before you do that uh, 10 cycles should be just enough for us to um, to to, uh, to get the axe moving and as you can see there no problem he throws the axe in any direction that he wants and he catches it and in those first few uh, seconds when it's been thrown nothing will happen and that basically means that uh, that it works exactly as it should and um, really that's pretty much it we've done the uh, what the sprite looks like we've covered um, how it moves how it bounces how it's stored how it's spawned how we set the timer how it's collected we've pretty much covered all of that so that's pretty much it then thanks a lot for watching hopefully i'll see you next time take care bye bye don't forget to like and subscribe cheers